Hello everybody, welcome to this basic tutorial of some settings outside of X-Plane. Even though I might look at a couple of things inside of X-Plane, uh, this is more to do with some tools that you might use that uh, might help your sim performance boost. Uh, this is X-Plane 11.41 just before the uh, X-Plane 11.50. I'm uh, recording this. I think 11.50 is in beta 4 right now. But uh, these things might still continue into the 11.50 uh, series and beyond. Uh, we'll see how that all goes. Or will these settings change due to Vulcan uh, basically coming out. So uh, one of the tools that I became aware of through an Aerosim Gaming uh, video, if you can, you can search them on YouTube, and you'll see a cool 25 minute video on process lasso. Uh, I'm just gonna go through real quick my basic settings that I use. Uh, the language in his video might be a little different only because uh, there was a different version of process lasso back then. But some of the key things in process lasso that I found to do is first of all, you wanna come up to your main menu and you wanna make sure that you have uh, your performance mode enabled i think in his video it used to be referred to as game mode so we want to put performance mode enabled uh, have that set okay uh, the other thing that we want to do is have the uh, either uh, uh, bit sum highest performance is typically what i what i have uh, set in here uh, so that's another thing that you want to make sure that you have on there and then the other option really it, it's really straightforward of course i would welcome other suggestions in the uh, uh comments down below because i'm always learning from other people is now you got to come over to x-plane uh while it's running of course and you're going to right click on it okay uh if we can grab it uh so let's go ahead and i could just click it by uh name and it should stay there Okay, and then we want to go over to CPU and, uh, well, a couple of things. We want to induce performance mode, so that'll stay on. So for your application uh, that you want it to perform well, we're going to induce the performance mode, so you got to make sure that that's on. Uh, then we're going to go over to CPU affinity, and I'm going to go to always, okay, and then select my CPU affinity, okay. Now, I, I've played around with this a little bit. You see these bar graphs over here that show you your current processors, right? And uh, let's show you another source. I kind of look at them side by side, even though people don't always like to rely on Task Manager itself because it's not as accurate as, let's say, a Hardware Info 64 or a uh, maybe something like a Process Lasso. Uh, you want the graphs to be as equal as possible, as we know that X-Plane is notorious for not really using utilizing CPUs evenly. But one of the things I did experiment with a little bit was I wanted to see how many CP uh, you know, I, there was a thought process of, well, maybe we'll run X-Plane on the majority of the cores, but not all of the cores, and then we'll put all of the other processes on those other remaining cores, or at least a heavy balance of them. And so that's what this allows you to do. You can play around with uh, X-Plane, running them on you know several cores, and then putting your other processes on the other cores. I guess the theory is that uh, when one process is running, it won't interfere with X-Plane and the other way around. I tried that. Um, mixed results. Uh, what I did find was you know uh, X-Plane in in my on my system when I played around with the settings. I, I did notice quite often under load that these three cores, 0, 1, 2, and 3, were usually a little higher when x would be running. Uh, so what I did was I said, well, let me just try them on three cores, but I'll move the cores over. Um, again, I'm not an expert, but I heard that Windows tends to default a lot of programs that are single process onto the 0 core. So then the thought process was, let's run x on maybe 1, 2, and 3. I saw the frame rate drop by 10. I added then core four. And you do that by just clicking these, right? If I wanted x to run on, let's say, uh, three cores. So if I did that, right? My frame right now is showing 35, okay? And I just switch it now down to three cores, click okay. All right, and now it dropped down to about 31, all right? Uh, and you can now see that cores are active. You're gonna see these go up, right? And then the rest of them are going to go down. 
Okay, so it's showing about 31, right? So then I, I, what I did was I kept adding course. And when I did that, I found that uh, as long as you have uh, at least uh, four or five cores, okay, it'll then shoot back up. Right now it's back up to 35, 36. All right, so I did that for a while. I said, all right, cool. Now I have all these extra cores like I put on OBS that I used to record and broadcast. Uh, my web browsers on the other cores. And it ran fine. It ran at the typical frames. What I did notice, though, for me personally, was that there were times where I'd go through, like, let's say, a, a heavy tile load for X-Plane or a high, uh, a, a high resolution mesh area. And I noticed that the, sometimes the sound would sort of cut out for a second. Uh, during a view change or something and you know whenever you hear that sound cut out for those of you that have been flying x for long enough You know that that sometimes means the sims about to crash So that made me nervous when I went back to back to this full seven or eight course uh, that sound cutting out stopped so You might have better success with that. I encourage you to play around with it, but anyway, I just want to show you that So I'm gonna go back over to you know all my cores and when I go back to all my cores like I said the frame rate's not going to jump up anymore. I'm at, I was at 36, and I'm still at 36, 37. But uh, the sim smoothness for me was was better. Okay, so I just want to show you that. But the main thing that you want to play around with, of course, we said was uh, you want performance uh, performance mode enabled as a whole for your computer. And then for the application that you really want to have induced performance mode. And then just make sure that your CPU affinity always, and you select them, they're all running or whatever you choose to do. Okay. Now, if you want to, you could take other things like I've never tried. Maybe I could take active sky and put it like maybe on two cores and your browsers, maybe put it on two or three cores. But then when you're slewing around on charts and maps, you might notice that it make it becomes a little bit more jerky. It's up to you. So that's pretty much uh, how I use process lasso. Again, if you guys have some more settings that you recommend to, to uh, explore and check out, uh, go ahead and post those in the comment section. The other thing I'll just quickly show you is the NVIDIA control panel. Okay. Now, uh, w these are my settings that I use. You can always take a screenshot. I've played around with this quite a bit, did a lot of reading, but I'll just hit up some of the important ones. Number one is this, I always, how the hell do you pronounce this? Anisotropic filtering. Does that sound professional enough? I set this to 16 times. Now, I think X-Plane used to or currently only lets it go up to four times, but I did notice that the uh, card setting did allow me to go higher. Although in the Vulcan beta, I felt like it didn't really pay attention to that. But anyway, what that basically means is in Sim, when you're looking down a runway, uh, if you have it set to application controlled, you will notice that uh, on many airports, the runway center lines will start to blur out after the f uh, it, it it's how sharp the textures look on shallow angles essentially so it'll be more detailed in the distance and believe it or not it's at a relatively low video card cost so we i encourage you to just give it a shot for the full 16. you could always dial it back you might have to restart the sim to see the changes i can't remember but basically, if you notice that your runway center lines are blurring out at a relatively short distance on a shallow angle, as we are here, then this setting will help. You, could, you know, and it comes in different flavors, two, four, six, eight. I think X-Plane within Sim tries to do four, but I went to the full. You could leave it on application control, but then it'll dial it back. Uh, the other one that you want to do, these are the latest drivers as of April 19th. Uh, Prefer maximum performance. It's going to have the choice of adaptive optimal power or prefer max. You want maximum performance. Uh, the other one too. I'll just kind of slowly scroll scroll through these. Scroll scroll through these uh, so you can just sort of have a look at what I have set. Uh, low latency mode ultra. So this actually did work for me, even though it's not supposed to based on the description. But uh, it did. It definitely improved performance and less sort of snags when you're turning your views left and right. It, actually, it seemed to somehow help with the texture paging, which is when you turn left and right, swapping the car, uh, textures on and off the card takes time at high settings. That's what Vulcan is really supposed to help with, and it seems to be doing in the betas. But this helped 
this helps also uh, pre-Vulcan 11.50. So give that a shot. Uh, and then the other ones, let's see, I think I just had these after reading a bunch of stuff on Clamp. Uh, the other one you want to make sure is this, I think, by default will come to application controlled or auto. Uh, set it to off. Um, your mileage may vary on that one. I definitely turned on VSync. Um, and uh, when you turn VSync on, make sure you turn on the triple buffering. I remember running VSync and losing a lot of frames, even though it made like a nice smooth transition. I lost frames. But turning on the triple buffering with it totally uh, brought it back to normal frame rate. So make sure that you use those hand in hand. Uh, that's really it. The only other thing that I haven't played around with that uh, this thing lets you do now. Where was it? It has a uh, uh, there's a slider in here that oh maximum frame rate. I have that set to off. But some people like to do like half frame rate at 30 frames per second. Uh, in other words, half of the refresh. I don't really, I like to go above 30 if I can, but it seems like the new, uh, the latest NVIDIA card settings or drivers allow you to turn this on and actually dial in something above 30. So you can play around with that as well. The theory behind that is it seems that some people feel if you limit the SIM to, let's say you're happy with 30 and you limit it, let's say 35, 40, then that extra horsepower can be used in other things, which seems legitimate to me, but uh, I've never really played around with that. So anyway... Hopefully some of these uh, settings and uh, thoughts help you out. I'm learning, looking forward rather to learning what you may have experienced and feel free to share those in the comments.